Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and joining us here tonight in the studio to shed more light on the youth, their role, and the empowerment of youth in Egypt over the past eight years and what is still to come. We're joined by Dr. Mohammed Khalil Musa, the university professor, educational consultant, and teacher trained. Dr. Khalil, thank you very thank much you very for much. joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Khalil, now. First off, before we start talking about what we're aspiring to, to see or the, the role of the youth in the near future, how would you evaluate and assess what's been happening over the past eight years? As soon as President Assisi assumed office, yes. there was a lot of emphasis on the youth, empowering them, putting them in uh, leading positions, uh, trying to embed them within the system and really give them the chance to assume these leading positions. How would you assess the whole process so far? Yeah, me, I, I think, thank you very much for having me at the beginning. And I want to tell you that, as you know, I've been working as a university teacher with youth, teaching mm -hmm. youth for more than 20 years. And I've always felt that youth have been suffering from depression, being marginalized, because they've got so many aspirations and ambitions, but at the same time, they couldn't find someone to listen to them. Mm -hmm. And of course, with the economic depression and the whole thing, many youth uh, resorted to illegal immigration. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about the improvement, you have to see what happened before that. Before that, there was a kind of a dark age for youth. Mm -hmm. Only some universities provided them with uh, the room for extracurricular activities. But apart from that, they did not have the chance to reach the presidential level. Mm -hmm. After that, when we heard about the presidential program for training youth, that was out of the box idea. Because as you know, uh, I'm actually, I'm currently working with some of the graduates from that program and the cadres of youth who got the preparation for the leadership are quite prepared. Some of them actually uh, applied for international companies and they're now taking leadership positions. So such programs that prepare youth, these programs do not only take them from the realm of depression, but also these programs provide them with a chance of professional development or maybe career opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, even today, if you've noticed, I've just, we've just heard that uh, the national dialogue mm -hmm. uh, included a lot of youth leaders. And some of them, by the way, are graduates from the presidential leadership training program. So that's what I'm talking about. If we're, we have the energy of youth, why not to take advantage of that for the sake of the, you know, the general good, for the sake of the country itself. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, let's have a look at what we should be doing in the future as well. So we're quite content, content with, we're very content with what's happening now. But later on, we're actually, we actually want to see youth in a kind of uh, decision maker positions as well. Mm -hmm. Now we have them as representatives. Maybe later on, they can be decision makers aided by and supported by old hands who have got the experience. Mm -hmm. What we need to do as well is that, and actually I think that the, uh, the president and the, the whole country now, they are fighting extremism. Mm -hmm. And this is something quite important. And let me tell you that we really need the media and the social media to emphasize the importance of raising awareness campaigns to tell the youth about extremism, mm -hmm. especially that extremists are not simply terrorists who are there in the, some of them are in the peninsula of Sinai. No, mm -hmm. they can be easily eradicated by the army over there. But the problem is through the social media platforms mm -hmm. that some youth or even teenagers are exposed to extremist ideas and dogmas that can really harm them. So it's very, very important that through series, movies, uh, you guys doing here the TV is that you have to warn mm -hmm. youth against extremist ideas. And that's why I believe that starting from today with the national debate, this opens the room for conversation. We need to listen to them. Mm -hmm. Because as you know quite well that may, if youth do not find people to listen to them, there will be the brain drain. And the brain drain means that many talented youth are leaving country and going to developed mm -hmm. countries. And this is actually what happened for many, many years. So it's yes. very important to keep them at home and give them positions, listen to them. Mm -hmm. Especially that youth are, nowadays are tech savvy. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I just want to tell yes. you that I graduated 25 years ago. By that time, we were simply happy with the mouse and double click. Yeah. That means tech savvy now mm -hmm. is something else. We have now platforms, youth who can start, loan, become entrepreneurs who can start their own websites and businesses. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important to listen to them and give them the chance to start their own world. And I believe that, there, that and what actually um, you know, makes me feel so proud nowadays is that even the Minister of Youth is a young mm -hmm. man. Yes. Well, how would you say, or what would you say was, uh, would be a bigger challenge for empowering the youth? Is it giving them the voice, uh, drawing up a clear path into leadership positions or decision-making positions, or as you've mentioned, is maybe changing the culture or creating that sort of hunger, eliminating any sort of radical or extremist sort of ideologies? What would be uh, more more problematic or a bigger obstacle for the youth in Egypt? I think the main obstacle that we're going to face is a mixture of all what you've mentioned, especially the generation gap mm -hmm. and some uh, social stereotypes. The problem is that till now, fathers and mothers, parents have mm -hmm. still the firm belief that these are kids. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we parents have to change their mindset about the uh, the young uh, uh, bro uh, sons and daughters, yes. and you, we have to listen to them. These are, after all, g future generations. So if we're going to look at the problems that youth were going to face, number one, the social mindset and some stereotyping, mm -hmm. that I think that some Egyptians, if they see a decision maker as a young man in his early 30s or late 20s, they'll feel kind of, uh, taken back mm -hmm. because they've not been used to having a young man. Number two, the major problem is that we need to have a platform for them. Mm -hmm. uh, meetings face to face are not kind of the, the preference for youth nowadays. They are so, as I mentioned, tech savvy and they're very much into social media. Mm -hmm. We should provide them with a platform and even you know, using social media platforms and applications that they can go live have debates live from their mm -hmm. homes. Mm -hmm. Number three, which is quite important, is that the lack of experience. Mm -hmm. And that's why if we're going to have youth, they must have, or they should have, on the same committee, experts and consultants, mm -hmm. so that we have this kind of balance between the energy and the youth of the youth and the wisdom of the yes. elderly. Yes. And I believe that one of the major obstacles as well is that, after all, young people are starting their own personal life. Mm -hmm. So if they're going to spend some time for the dialogue and all that, they have to be financially rewarded. They have to find kind of the country and decision makers have to support them financially mm -hmm. and to give them the opportunity to prosper because they are starting their career life and their personal life. Yes. So I cannot ask a young man mm -hmm. who's 28, 29 just to work for the sake of the national dialogue without mm -hmm. uh, providing them with a kind of um, appreciation, yes. uh, all types of appreciation. Mm -hmm. And talking about appreciation, I was so happy that yesterday, I don't remember the name of the lady, the young lady who won a medal, gold medal. Yes. How the Minister of Youth received her at the airport, that was a kind of a gesture of appreciation. I think that was really good yes. and uh, that's what I'm saying is that if you feel that role models like Muhammad Salah or those who are winning the medals even among the athletes these can be role models and this is something else that we really need to mention yes that media and social media should highlight role models mm -hmm. from the youth and from those who are middle-aged like myself maybe yes. or you mm -hmm. kind of 30s, 40s, because mm -hmm. after all, they look up to them. Mm -hmm. They say, okay, uh, you, you, there should be campaigns against drugs, you should manage your time, don't spend too much time on the laptop, try to, don't keep complaining, start working. All these kind of campaigns can start by youth, yes. to youth. Well, you've alluded to the, the, the youth being present, for instance, at the National Dialogue, uh, yeah. the Parliament, the committees within the Parliament, political parties as well. And we've seen the, the National Youth Forum that is being held uh, 
annually. Here, annually. Also, the World Youth Forum that is being held annually. Yeah. In this. And so it seems that the, the government is really embarking on, on these conferences, these forums, uh, creating the sort of dialogue planting all the youth elements within all the governmental institutions. Now, do you feel that these forums, these events, do they have a big effect on really promoting and encouraging the youth into taking a step further, not just uh, believing that they can make the decisions, believing that they can lead the country forward? Yeah, thank you. You know, that's a kind of a tricky question because if we look at those forums that are, mm -hmm. are held annually, they underscore the importance mm -hmm. of youth mm -hmm. and this in itself helps in changing the mindset and the view of youth as young kids mm -hmm. no they have become part of the decision making so this is the bright side of the whole thing mm -hmm. and the bright side as well is that we see young people from all over the world and this is quite important because in the, in the world of globalization, our youth have to be exposed to diverse cultures mm -hmm. to develop their interpersonal skills and intercultural skills. This is quite important. But at the end of the day, if these youths get together and they provide suggestions and recommendations, they have to be heard. Mm -hmm. Some of these recommendations under the umbrella of consultants have to be implemented. Yes. So it's not just listening, listening, studying their suggestions and implementing whatever doable. Mm -hmm. And this is something quite important because if, as a young man, if I simply just speak and you listen to me and say, thank you, bye, of course that could lead to frustration. And this is quite important. We need to provide them with hope. We listen to you, we take your suggestions into mm -hmm. consideration we take whatever reasonable doable and we implement them mm -hmm. and this is quite interesting as well that uh, in the world forum that was held in Sharm el-Sheikh or um, yes. I think at the yes. beginning of this year mm -hmm. I saw something like a young parliament a kind of a miniature kind yes. of parliament a role playing mm -hmm. in front of the president and the president was there just like a father, a kind of a father image, looking after all of them, making sure that they understand their responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And there was a young man playing the role of the prime minister. Mm -hmm. I can see these are promising cadres that have to be taken into consideration in the field, into the whole process of decision making. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think that media, newspapers and social media have to tell us about the future of these young people. What happened after that? Mm -hmm. We should not only highlight athletes uh, and young actors and young singers with all due respect to them. Mm -hmm. We have to tell them that those medics, nurses, young nurses, young medics, young engineers, they've made it. Mm -hmm. So this, is, this inspires parents to give kind of some power, pass on the power to youth, yes. tell them you can be like that. Mm -hmm. Why not to have movies about stories of success mm -hmm. of true people? Why not to have documentaries? Documentaries of young people. I know that kind of, mm -hmm. that sounds bizarre because usually we have documentaries about scientists, old people who are about 70 plus and their journey of success. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine just when you open TV as a parent or a young man and you find the story of a success of someone who's 28 mm -hmm. and the finale is to be continued? Yes. I'm just still young. Yes. Well, it's not really that bizarre because you, you hear about a lot of stories of success of in terms of uh, business-wise and um, economically uh, suave youth. I mean, there's been a lot of emphasis on startups, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, a lot of uh, mini, I mean, smaller micro businesses that made it globally, mm -hmm. something that started off with uh, a few thousand pounds and now is worth millions. Now, do you feel that it's not just the political sort of leadership decision making kind of empowerment for youth, but also Economic. economically, yeah. it has been very empowering. And at the same time, you're not really looking for something that maybe you're preparing someone for a leadership position within 10 or 15 years, but something that 
already is happening right away within two or three years people understand profit people understand yeah. money so do you feel that also empowering all these startups the uh, entrepreneurs the small and medium enterprises it really focuses on the empowerment and the the role the youth can play in actually lifting the whole economy yes and um, by the way talking about economy it's important to tell uh, the viewers that uh, with the devaluation of the pound, mm -hmm. I know that there is an economic recession. We all know that. But at the same time, some international companies are recruiting young, talented, hard-working Egyptians, mm -hmm. Egyptian youth. Yes. This is a message that should be delivered to all people. And I keep telling my students, mm -hmm. if you are hard-working, if you've got a vision and you've got good language, mm -hmm. you can be easily recruited at the, at the multinational companies that have been hiring Egyptians. And by the way, nowadays, many young people are working with American, British or European companies from home mm -hmm. through the Internet virtually. And they get paid really, you know, in hard currency. So at the end of the day, you find them that they are the economic situation mm -hmm. with all the difficulties you know they've got their own you know the bright side of it which mm -hmm. is that some young people are really recruited and i've been involved in that I, I i remember as far as i recall there was a canadian company that told me we need to recruit young people different fields but we just want them to make sure that they have good english or mm -hmm. good french or good spanish so Yes, economically, we can empower youth by informing them about these opportunities and at the same time providing them with the means of improving themselves. Yes. So it's important to them, hey guys, there are opportunities at multinational company, you can still work properly from Egypt, from home, mm -hmm. with your pajama jobs kind of thing. But at the same time, you've got to be fully equipped with that. It's not just the CV, you've got to improve your IT skills, interpersonal skills and language skills as well. Yes. Well, as you've heard, Dr. Khalil, it's not just political or economic, but also cultural and uh, in the sports world. Egypt is witnessing a lot of success over the past few years. We are actually witnessing the uh, Mediterranean Games that Egypt has actually won about 43, 44 medals, including about 13 gold medals. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back. Youth and sports projects have been witnessing unprecedented development thanks to the political leadership support. During a ceremony of the Youth Center in Kalyubaya Governorates, Kofra Shibin Township, the Minister of Youth and Sports, Ashraf Subhi, and his ministry said they're keen on working on improving the efficiency of youth and sports centers nationwide whilst increasing the number of projects and programs carried out at these centers to enhance the skills and abilities of young people and promote their awareness about various challenges. The minister highlighted the initiative's important role in enhancing the services and infrastructure of these centers. The minister also inaugurated the center's parliament chamber where he attended part of a parliamentary session during which young members of parliament submitted interpretations to government executives concerned with health, national security, youth and sports. So he also inspected a handcraft exhibition for people with special needs, which was organized by the Differently Able Initiative. The minister participated also in an event organized by the center's cultural club. For his part, the Khalyubaya governor, Abdul Hamid al Haggan stressed that the governor spares no effort to support the presidential initiative, adding that all bodies are doing their best to ensure the provision of better services in rural areas. Meanwhile, under the patronage of President Abdel Fattah Sisi, the fourth edition of the World Youth Forum was held in Sharm el-Sheikh in January of 2022 under the slogan, Back Together. The forum is an annual global event which is considered an interactive platform established by a group of promising youth to convey a message of peace, prosperity and harmony to the whole world.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, continuing our discussion with Dr. Khalil. Now, we've seen a lot of uh, empowerment. very, very good examples, empowerment for the youth, athletes. You've mentioned a, a few, a lot of sports, be it football, uh, uh, squash, table yes. tennis. I mean, the list goes on. Now, not taking away from this is their sheer will and determination, but there's a lot of talk about vocational training and yes. really working on the mindset of the youth, working on the mindset of the Egyptian uh, citizen, the, the youth, and teaching them the skills that are basic, that are necessary to, to have some sort of um, a self-driven character. Now, you're dealing with education, training teachers, I mean, you deal with a lot of youth. What seems to be the biggest sort of obstacle? Is it, is it the hope? Is it the belief? Is it the cultural? Is it the, the, the mentality of the youth? Is it self-doubt? Is it insecurities? What are they? A lot, a lot of challenges. And being a teacher trainer and a teacher for more than 20 years, I can tell that uh, a lot of youth are kind of frustrated and believe it or not, those who are willing to change, they make it at the end. Mm -hmm. So the irony is that because many are frustrated, few are prospering. Mm -hmm. So if we've got the atmosphere that everybody is ambitious and everybody is succeeding, we will have few succeeding at the end. But mm -hmm. the thing is that within the whole atmosphere, you find promising young men and women who know how to start and to start the track, to be on the track towards achieving their dream. So let's point out what are the requirements nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's very important to tell you that we're talking about the world market, not the national market anymore. Mm -hmm. National market, this word has become obsolete because in the global world, you can work any place at any company from home. Mm -hmm. So the global market requires number one soft skills, mm -hmm. interpersonal skills. And this is something that I've noticed is that because many young people are staying at home or stuck to their phones and tablets, some of them uh, have lost that kind of human kind of soft, soft skills. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you something funny that sometimes I tell my university students, when you step into the classroom, I won't let you in until you say good morning, good afternoon, as alaikum. Mm -hmm. You've got to say something. You've got to learn how to keep a smile. Mm -hmm. You've got to understand how to negotiate. Sometimes I teach them this. Even I'm, I'm teaching them IELTS or English, mm -hmm. prepare them for scholarships or prepare them for studies. But at the same time, I have to kind of instill some skills into them. Mm -hmm. Some skills like how to have this kind of eye contact, presentation skills, negotiation skills, how to, to respect differences, since we're living in a world of differences, mm -hmm. world of global world yes. with diverse cultures. This is something, something else called the hard skills, which are the certificates. Yes. It's very important that nowadays young people have they must have the knowledge about IT programming and coding. Mm -hmm. And I just want to tell you that parents should start with the kids. Kids at the age of eight, nine, and 10, uh, they, they are simply stuck to their tablets and YouTube and watching their channel, that's good. But at the same time, why not to take advantage of the summer vacation and start training them? If we're looking at youth, we have to provide programs, affordable programs mm -hmm. at cheap prices and cheap fees for parents to provide these courses to their kids or teenage boys and girls so that they get prepared before the university and before graduation. Mm -hmm. So certificates, IT certificates, programming and coding, and most importantly, language. I know that you'll be yeah. saying that because I'm a, uh, an English instructor, but it's important that English is the lingua franca. Mm -hmm. By lingua franca, I mean that it's the international language that we use all over the world. So you should have a kind of an intermediate level of fluency. So this is a direct message to all youth. Now, all sources of professional development are available online for free. Mm -hmm. So if you simply go to YouTube and <coughs> just click on BBC Learning English mm -hmm. or Sound of America, you'll keep listening 
to all the updates about all the inventions, everything around the world in English. You can get courses online for free. This is something very important. This is an advantage that we did not have 20 or 30 years ago. Yes. We had to pay for that. Mm -hmm. Lastly, it's very important for you to understand that the key to success is determination. Mm -hmm and not to follow the whole thing of frustration and depression and whining and complaining. No, you should get rid of that. You should start. As long as you have faith in God mm -hmm. and then yourself, you'll have a vision to achieve your mission. Yes. Well, the name of the game over the past few years have been sustainable development. Yes. Uh, Egypt has its own vision for achieving sustainable uh, development goals by 2030. Now, empowering youth and really giving them the lead and, uh, and then following them, basically. You, you mentioned the family and the parents and this is how it starts, but how can the government or how can we all as a society make sure that this is it's not just uh, something that we are witnessing for a span of eight or ten or fifteen years but something that will be sustainable that is ongoing an ongoing process that would just flush out a lot of uh, impressive inspirational uh, youthful leaders okay if we're looking at sustainable development we've got to look at the problems that we have currently, mm -hmm. especially that, of course, you know quite well, let's be honest about that. If we're going to, to talk about youth, we have to talk about youth as young married couples. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy that the Institute of Azhar has started kind of programs for training young couples mm -hmm. and telling them more about marriage. Maybe this is totally irrelevant to the idea of the program, but let's be honest, if we talk about sustainable development, we're talking about the Institute of Family. Mm -hmm. The family starts with young couples. Two young couples, they need to know their rights for each other, to know how to, to raise their kids, those who will be young mm -hmm. by 2040 after our vision of 2030. Mm -hmm. So family comes number one. Number two, after that, providing opportunities for young people mm -hmm. and providing them with training to groom them for the global and local market. Mm -hmm. Now international companies are opening up in Egypt. We have to provide youth with uh, whatever necessary to be employed. Mm -hmm. We have to think about unemployment. We have to talk about, honestly, about the problems of education. Mm -hmm. Education starts with children. I'm so happy that nowadays children at schools do not have to memorize mm -hmm. you know what we call rote learning i memorize and i put things into paper now there is a lot of critical thinking happening this change in the field of education we will reap the you know the success of all that maybe in 10 years mm -hmm. but at the same time we have to start with the family programs for youth awareness training Mm -hmm. to be able to start the sustainable development and reach 2030. If you go to the new administrative capital, you'll find so many new schools, new universities, booming projects, entrepreneurs starting their own businesses. Mm -hmm. They have to be supported by the government, mm -hmm. supported in terms of financially, programs, awareness, mm -hmm. all kind of social, financial, economic, and political support. Yes. Well, you're, you're a veteran within the educational uh, sector. Um, you've mentioned the changes that have been taking place within the educational system here in Egypt. And you've traveled around Europe, the Gulf, Middle East. Uh, so how would you evaluate the, the development, the, the refurbishing, the facelift of the educational system here in Egypt over the past couple of years? We've taken uh, s some sort of a crash course during the coronavirus pandemic when yes. everything had to uh, happen online. So how would you compare it now to where you've seen and really the, 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 the specificities uh, and the specifics of the educational system so far? The educational system is going through a tremendous change, mm -hmm. okay, very good. But at the same time, we need to provide training to teachers. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to bring changes, parents have to know about the changes. Mm -hmm. Teachers have to be trained 
to know how to implement these changes. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about critical thinking skills uh, and all those open question, open ending, ended questions and all that, that's, that's really good, that's very beneficial for the development of children and teenagers, our students. Mm -hmm. So the whole education system is going through a kind of being revolutionized, mm -hmm. especially with the Egyptian Knowledge Bank. If you go and visit the Egyptian Knowledge Bank, you'll have access to channels uh, that are astonishing. You can see all the material in terms of audiovisuals. That's impressive. But at the same time, um, with all that, teachers have to be well trained. Mm -hmm. So we have teachers who are suffering from the lack of training. Mm -hmm. So they have to be provided with enough training, enough guidance to be able to support parents. And parents simply, they wake up and they don't understand what's happening. Yes. So parents vent out their energy on the social media. Mm -hmm. And that's why if we need to kind of change the education, education mm -hmm. is based on teachers, learners, and parents. Yes. Yes. And they have to complete each other. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you've heard, Dr. Khalil, I mean, it really starts with the family, the parents, the education, the teachers, a lot of things. I mean, the government is doing what it can to empower the youth, but it really mainly starts from home, from school. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of The Daily Debate. But before we go, I'd like to thank my very thank distinguished you. guest, Dr. Mohammed Khalil Musa, the University thank Professor you. Educational Consultant and Teacher Trainer. Dr. Khalil, it thank was a you. pleasure having you with us. Same here. Thank, thank you. you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for more coming up on Night International. I'm Haini Saif. Thank you for joining us.